Hello everyone. This video walks through completing packet tracer assignment 6.3.3.8 Inner VLAN Routing Challenge. This packet tracer assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Routing and Switching Essentials version 6 curriculum. Now in this particular lab, uh, we are going to configure Inner VLAN Routing as well as all the other stuff in chapter 6 and some review a little bit from previous stuff like uh, configuring the router and switches with interface uh, IP addresses and subnet mask and default gateways and things like that. Um, so it's a good review of everything we did in chapter 6 mostly. Um, so hopefully you've already completed those labs as well before you get to this one. Now the kind of diagram that we have here again we see that each one of these PCs are in separate VLANs. PC 1's in VLAN 10, PC 2's in VLAN 20, PC 3's in VLAN 30. Uh, so we know that each one of these lines or ports connected off of the switch to our end device PCs need to be operating in access mode because of that because we only want to carry one VLAN to that PC and you know to each respective VLAN. Now the way the traffic flows, PC 1, 2, and 3 eventually will all have to flow across this one line going from switch 1 to R1. Now because of that, we want to put this in trunking mode on the switches end because again it has to carry multiple VLAN traffic. On the routers end here, on the physical port, now we could have a physical port for every VLAN, but it will be very difficult to do that on a router. That is kind of the legacy way to do this. So G01 here, for each one of these VLANs, we would actually need three separate ones. And you see here, we've even got more VLANs than that. We've technically got five, 10, 20, 30, 88, and 99. Uh, 88 and 99 may be used for like native and management, and you see that down here. Those are not ones that we're gonna be exactly using. Uh, all the time, but they're used for some different purposes. And again, in chapter six, we talk about the different types of VLANs. So we're going to use sub interfaces here. So all we want to do is really turn on the G01 port on R1. Um, and again, we're going to get to configuring this as a minute. This is just kind of an overview of looking at the topology, but we're going to have a sub interface, which is kind of like a virtual one. And you see those here, they're noted with G0 slash one, the physical port, and then a dot and then the VLAN. Okay. That keeps it consistent for us. And we have to set up some dot one Q encapsulation on each one of those ports that relate to the VLAN number, as well as set an IP address for each one. Okay, and that's going to be the default gateway for each one of these PCs and their respective VLANs. We do have some native uh, VLANs to set up. We got some other port assignments here, depending on the uh, VLAN. Okay, and then we've got our um, server over here that we're going to be talking to through this uh, headquarters internet cloud. Well, we don't have to configure that. So. Let's get to configuring. It says assign IP addressing to R1 and S1 based on the addressing table. Okay, so we're going to kind of start with our sub interfaces and other interfaces first. So let's start with R1. So type enable config T and we're going to consult this addressing table over here. So we've got G00. That is the interface that is on the other side here. This is G00 going to HQ. So that physical interface does need an IP address. So interface G00, IP add 172.17.25.2, 255.255.255.252, .255 and no shut just to make sure it's uh, turned on. Now, what I recommend doing for interface G01 which is this interface right here, okay, is we're just going to turn that on first with no shut. The reason being, and again, we don't put any physical IP addressing on that. All of them are on the sub interfaces. But the reason I recommend turning that one on first is so that every sub interface you do automatically turns on. If you don't, then they don't automatically turn on. You have to type no shut each time. So now let's go to the sub interfaces. So we do interface G0 slash 1 dot 10. Okay, and you see it automatically changed to up and we know we're doing a sub interface because it says sub dash IF here, or sorry, dash sub IF. 
All right, now we're going to do the dot one Q encapsulation. If you try to do the IP address first, it will give you an error. All right, so we do encapsulation dot one Q and we're gonna be doing VLAN 10 for that one. So we put 10. Again, this encapsulates each packet to uh, make sure that it has VLAN 10 tagged on it, okay? Then we're gonna do IP add. 172.17.10.1.255.255.255.0. Okay, we don't have to do no shut because it's already turned on. Then we'll do interface G0 slash 1.20. You see it automatically turns on. Incap.1Q20. IP add 172.17.20.1.255.255.255.0. Okay. Okay, uh, interface G0 slash 1.30 automatically turns on. Incap dot 1Q30. IP add 172.17.30.1. 255.255.255.0. .255 now we do have two other ones that aren't like readily seen when we look at our 10, 20, and 30 VLAN. Those are obviously assigned to our PCs. But the other ones are needed as well. G0 slash 1.88. Incap dot 1Q88. IP add 172.17.88.1. 255.255.255.0. And then lastly, interface G0 slash 1.99. Incap dot 1Q99 and IP add 172.17.99.1.255.255.255.0. All right, so we got all of that configured on R1, got the sub interfaces, the encapsulations, the IP addresses, we've got the other side, this side G00 configured, so we have got everything on the router complete. Okay, now if we move over to S1, let's start with the addressing first. So we do have a management VLAN interface that is different from a normal VLAN. So interface VLAN 99, and we've got the IP address of 172.17.99.10.255.255.255.0. No shut to make sure it's on. And then we also see we've got a default gateway here. So we want to do IP default dash gateway 172.17.99.1. Okay, so we've configured that as well. That concludes all of like the addressing for uh, R1 and S1. Now let's just double check, make sure all the PCs have their IP addresses correct and configured. Okay, we see that. Got that, and got that one. All right, so they're all good to go. So this address and table is, all right, finished. Now, on S1, it asks us to create, name, and assign VLANs based on the VLAN and port assignments table. So we've got these VLANs here. We want to create 10, 20, 30, 88, 99, make sure they're named correctly, and make sure we assign the correct interfaces to those ports. So let's create the VLANs first. So we do VLAN 10, name, faculty, and staff. Make sure, or faculty forward slash staff. Make sure you type these exactly as you see them. VLAN 20, name, students. VLAN 30, name, guest, and in parentheses, default. VLAN 88, name, native. VLAN 99, name, name, management. Okay. So you've got all of those named accordingly. Remember, if you do a show VLAN brief, you will see 10, 20, 30, 88, 99, and what we named them. Now you'll also see what ports they're assigned to, but we haven't done that yet. So let's do that. 
So they want us to take interfaces FA011 through 17. So not just like for instance here, PC1 is connected to FA011, but they want this whole range FA011 through 17 to be um, a part of VLAN 10. So what we'll do is use the interface range command FA011 through 17, and we'll do uh, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. Okay. Then we'll do interface range. This time we're doing 18 through 24. So interface range FA 0 18 through 24. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. Okay. Next we're doing FA 0 6 through 10 for VLAN 30. So interface FA06 through 10. Oops, forgot the range. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 30. Okay, so we've got that set up as well. Now we want to do G00 for this one. Now this VLAN 99, that automatically happens. Uh, for the interface, so no need to worry about that one. But this one we do need to put for G01. So interface G01, switch port mode, and again, this is the one here we need to put in switch port mode trunk. Okay. We got to put that one in trunking mode. All right. And then switch port native VLAN. Sorry, switch port trunk native VLAN 88. Okay, so we got to put that native VLAN on G01. So switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk, native VLAN 88. All right. We already configured the default gateway a while ago. Remember that's IP default gateway and then your default gateway IP address. Uh, we configured the sub interfaces on R1 and now we just want to verify that everything can connect and we have a hundred out of a hundred.